it's Jennifer from Fiberflux. In this video, I'm going to show you how to crochet the crazy fast Christmas cowl. This is fun, so fast, and very, very festive, and it whips up in no time. And I've picked some very um, traditional holiday colors, and we're going to learn how to not only crochet this piece, but learn how to switch colors and seam it up. And you can also turn it into a scarf if you'd rather have a scarf. And uh, this is really fun to wear as well. The finished piece has a 36 inch circumference and I'll show you how to change that if you want it to be larger or smaller. And it is about six and a half inches wide. So let's get started. For this project, you'll need a six millimeter J crochet hook, a tapestry needle, a pair of scissors, and your yarn. I'm gonna be using Red Heart Super Saver and I have here some really fun kind of classic holiday colors. This is the spring green, the cherry red, the white, and the patty green. Now you can use any colors you like, um, but I wanted to pick these and make kind of like chunky stripes. So let's get started. Okay, so you'll want to grab your first color. Now for the example here, um, I did five rows of each color before I switched off. But for our uh, tutorial, I'm going to switch off a little sooner just so I can show you how to, how to change colors. But if you're looking to replicate this, I did five rows of each color before switching off, okay? So I grabbed the patty green as my first color. It really doesn't matter, whatever color you like. Um, likewise, you could also do a variegated yarn so you don't have to switch colors. Now, Super Saver does have a similar holiday palette variegated yarn if you want to try that or you could do a solid color if you have a favorite color you want to do or if you're giving it as a gift you could choose their favorite color as well. So what we're going to do is put a slip knot on our hook to begin. Wrap the yarn around your fingers to make a loop. Bring the yarn behind the loop, reach in with your hook, bring up a loop and tighten. All right let me just zoom in a hair so you can see. Then we're going to do a starting chain of 25. So to make a chain, wrap the yarn around the hook and bring it through, okay? So that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three, twenty-four, and twenty-five, okay? So what we're gonna do now for row one is in the fourth chain from the hook, we're gonna create our first V. This is a classic V stitch, which works up very uh, rapidly, but it's also, I think it's extremely beautiful. It's one of my favorite stitches ever. Okay, so let's work our first V. This loop here does not count. So in the fourth chain from the hook, one, two, three, four, we're going to work a double crochet, wrap yarn around hook, insert it into that fourth chain from the hook, bring up a loop, you'll have three loops on your hook, wrap yarn around hook, bring it through the first two loops, wrap yarn around hook, bring it through the last two loops, then you're gonna chain one, then in that same chain, you're gonna work another double crochet, okay? Just like that. So you'll have your first little V of your row, okay? Then what we need to do is skip two chains, one, two, and in that chain after that, we're going to work our next V. So work a double crochet, chain one, double crochet. So double crochet, chain one, double crochet. Just like that. Now we have our second V, okay? We're gonna keep doing this all the way across. Skip two chains in the chain after that, work a double crochet, chain one, double crochet. Those of you who are beginners, this is a fun way to, if you've mastered the double crochet stitch, to kind of show off your new skills. Instead of just straight rows of double crochet, you can kind of add a little chain in there and create a V and it looks a little bit lacier and more textured. So this is a wonderful beginner project. If you're wanting to kind of branch off from just straight rows of certain stitches. Okay, so skip two chains in the chain after that, work your next V. Double crochet, chain one, double crochet. Skip two chains in the chain after that, work your next V. Double crochet, chain one, 
double crochet. Skip two chains in the chain after that, work your next V, double crochet, chain one, double crochet. Skip two chains in the chain after that, work double crochet, chain one, double crochet. Then skip two chains and then you'll have one chain left. So for this, we're just going to make one double crochet into that chain. If we did a V, it would start to expand and um, increase. So we want to keep it rectangular and with straight sides, okay? So just one double crochet in that last chain. So row one is complete. Now I'm going to stick with the patty green for the next row just to show you row two. Um, and then from there on, we'll switch colors and I'll show you how to do that. All right, let's move on to row two. This is very easy. Actually, row two is easier than row one because we're not skipping chains and counting things, okay? So we're gonna chain three, one, two, three, and we're gonna turn. Now, if you see over in our example, our V's are stacked on top of one another. So we're gonna be working into the V's from the previous row. In the written pattern over on the blog, I call this the chain one space. So when we did a chain one in between our V there, those two double crochets had a chain one in between, that created a space, that's called the chain one space, okay? So right in the center of that first V of your row, you're gonna work another V. So double crochet, chain one, double crochet. Okay, and you can see now our little V's are stacked. Hop over to the next V, double crochet, chain one, double crochet, Next V, you can see this is much faster than the first row. Double crochet, chain one, double crochet. But that first row is super important to kind of get your foundation set up. Okay, next V, double crochet, chain one, double crochet. Next V, double crochet, chain one, double crochet. Next V, double crochet, chain one, double crochet. And then the last V, you're gonna do the same thing. Double crochet, chain one, double crochet. Just like that, okay? Now let's finish off the row. Okay, so we need to finish off the row here. So in that topmost chain that you see, work a double crochet in that topmost chain. Remember that turning chain from the previous row? You're gonna go in the, the topmost chain and work a double crochet right into that, okay? And that'll give you a nice side of your work, okay? So row two is complete. Now, we're gonna just repeat for the rest of our cowl, we're gonna repeat, repeat row two over and over and over and over and over again, switching colors as often as you like. Now again, I did mine every five rows uh, for my example, but um, you'll just repeat row two over and over and over until your cowl is as long as you'd like it to be um, or as long as I made mine and I talked about the sizing a little bit earlier in the video. When you're ready to switch colors, let's pretend we're ready to switch colors. So all you're going to do is take your scissors and cut the yarn, fasten off. Okay, now we're going to grab our second color. And I love this super saver because the center pool balls of yarn are so handy, especially when you're doing lots of different colors. Okay, now remember where we fastened off? There's going to be a little stitch there, okay? Or a little loop at the top. Just insert, insert your hook back into that last stitch you worked. Bring the new yarn through. Now, this is how I like to do it. It's fast, it's easy, it's no fuss. There are tons of ways to join on a new ball of yarn. This is the way I like to do it. Um, if you have a preferred way, definitely feel free to do it that way instead, if you prefer. Okay, I'm just going to get these tails out of the way. We'll weave those in later. Okay, so what you'll want to do is reinsert your hook back into that stitch, bring up a loop, and then you're just going to proceed as normal. So remember, we're re just repeating row two over and over and over again. So go ahead and chain three. One, two, three, and turn your work. I'm just going to get you started on this row. Um just to show you, but it is the same thing we just did. If you need to see the full row, just back up the video a little bit and you can watch it as many times as you need. So go into that first V of the row and work your double crochet, chain one, double crochet. Next V, 
double crochet, chain one, double crochet. Next V, double crochet, chain one, double crochet, and so forth. So just keep repeating row two over and over and over. Again, if you need to see the full row, just back up the video when I worked this row in its entirety. Okay, I'm gonna keep going with my cowl, repeating row two, switching colors, and we'll rejoin in a moment and finish up our cowl. Okay, I'm just working that last V of the row. As you can see, I've added some more colors to mine. All right, and then remember that third chain up or the topmost chain, work your double crochet into that to finish off the row. Okay, and then we're complete here. So um, again, I did five rows of each color for mine. So what you'll wanna do is uh, grab your scissors and cut the yarn, but you'll wanna do a nice long tail to um, be able to seam it together. We're gonna be seaming the ends of our cowl. Now, if you don't want a cowl, if you'd rather have a little festive scarf, you can just leave it as is. I would make it a little bit longer than this though. All right, and then we're going to fasten off like that. See so how I have a nice long tail. And then what we need to do is grab the other end and kind of sandwich everything together, okay? One more thing I wanted to point out before you finish is that when you're doing the colors, so I had four colors. I did the red, the dark green, light green, white, and I did uh, them in order. So I did red, dark green, light green, white, red, and then dark green, light green, white. So what I did was when I, when I go to sew these together, um, it'll keep the pattern sequence. Do you know what I mean? Okay, so let's fold this in half like so and sandwich our ends. And if you just cut a long tail, you'll already have sort of a built-in matching piece of yarn. And then we're just gonna thread our tapestry needle and sandwich all of this together, straightening things out as needed. And then just hold those ends as nice and neat and lined up as possible. And then we're just gonna go in both layers here. Try to get both loops of both layers if you can. Now I know one was a starting chain and the other one is the top of a row but if you just try to hold things uh, together as neatly as possible, it'll look great. So I'm doing a whip stitch. A whip stitch is basically a spiral through a piece to get, it gives a nice sort of invisible, uh, nice neat seam here. So I'm just going into both layers and even though I'm doing this pretty quickly, I'm giving it a little tug as I go realigning things is needed. We're just going all the way across here. And you'll find when you make yours that this is a really fast little project and it's very festive. I'm gonna be making this for someone who I know will love to be wearing something festive for the holiday. Okay, and again, you know, there's so many choices of yarn in a similar weight as the Super Saver, you can really um, have fun with this this pattern and picking colors. If you need to make a couple more gifts, this is one of those gifts that goes by really, really quickly. You can just kind of pop in a movie and uh, get a few worked up, okay? So we're just coming across. And the J hook is still, still a decent size hook. I mean, you can really um, get some stitches done over a short period of time with the J hook. Okay, so see my whip stitch? And then I'm just coming up to the end here. Just like that. Okay, now once you get to the end, pull it almost all the way through. You have a little loop there. And just send your needle through that loop and then pull everything down nice and tight. This is kind of like a built-in way to um, tie a knot without pulling your needle out, okay? And then I like to do it just once more. Do that same step just once more, go through that last loop, pull it nice and tight. And then without even taking your needle off, just go ahead and weave it in right then and there while you have everything there, okay? So just 
Now my tail is red, so I'm just going to keep it in the red section so that it blends and you don't have, you know, this red piece of yarn traveling through the dark green area, which would not look as nice. Um, I always encourage folks to take your time with your finish work and your seaming because you have all this beautiful stitch work over here and you'll want to um, do nice neat finish work because it really makes a huge difference, okay? Now, because of our whip stitch, the way we've done it, this is kind of the inside now. See how it made, it almost looks like a little candy cane. Um, but that's uh, gonna be the inside of the cow now. So you can cut the yarn when you're ready, turn it right side out, and your cow is complete. And it looks so cute, I just love it. Let me zoom out a tiny bit so you can see everything. And the way I've done it is the pattern just continues all the way around and our seam is in the back and the front of it, it lays nice and neat, okay? So that is how you crochet the crazy fast Christmas cow. Thanks so much for watching and be sure and click the subscribe button to get all the latest Fiberflex video updates. Thanks again and happy holidays everyone. Bye.